Egyptians have experimented on a variety of uh, ways of writing. First, they started with pictographic, and then they evolved. It's evolved into hieratic, what they call sacred writing system. And then the third part is what they call demotic system. Demotic system is like uh, for ordinary people. The pictographic system is conventionally was kept and maintained throughout throughout the Egyptian historical period, up to and including the last uh, pharaonic era. So therefore. Uh, we find those documents in their temples, uh, in their uh, grave sites, in their palaces, in, in, in all variety of places. And then given the fact that the Egyptians were very powerful in a sense of not only being able to produce surplus food through irrigation agriculture, but their ability to trade in the whole region uh, enabled them to spread their knowledge to the rest of the world. And then the writing system is part of that ancient Egyptian civilization. And so therefore that becomes a very relevant record as far as African history is concerned. A whole lot of knowledge that emerged out of the Egyptian experience is also rooted in the fact that they have perfected the writing system for a variety of uh, intellectual practices, knowledge practices. You have been involved in research on African writing systems for quite a while. Is that so? That's, uh, that's true. Actually, I started work on writing systems in 1992 uh, when I joined Temple University as a PhD graduate student. And then I did my PhD dissertation on the uh, Ethiopic writing system. And then later on, work, having done some research on the Ethiopic writing system which ultimately came out as a book uh, and when I went to Cornell University joined the Department uh, African Studies and Research Center I started looking more into the writing system of not only Ethiopia but the entire continent of Africa and then in 1996 I was able to put uh, create a website African writing systems and it was actually a very successful broadly and massively used throughout the world, which introduced the writing systems that have been invented, created by Africans uh, from ancient times all the way to the early part of the 20th century in the whole continent of Africa. There are more writing systems in Africa than anywhere else. And then in fact, Africans, both in the ancient times and in the contemporary times, have invented writing systems. Writing systems, when we say systems, we're talking about uh, having signs, symbols, images that are utilized not just simply for communication purposes, but for a whole variety of uh, purposes, including uh, expressions, ideas, uh, like what we call ideographies, pictography, and then sometimes for ritual purposes, uh, for annual ceremonies, for initiations, a whole variety of purposes, signs have been used. And then usually what we do is we tend to restrict the notion of uh, alphabet or the notion of writing system to communication, to language. But if you kind of see it in a broader term uh, and, then, and then look for uh, various symbol signs uh, certain rituals, ceremonies, uh, annual events, then we discover that Africa actually is full of symbol signs and writing systems. And then it's not per se uh, fully uh, engaged in oral traditions. Of course we have oral traditions, but oral tradition is not the only expression of Africa, but that's not the only tradition we have. We have also the writing tradition. That's how there are philosophical writings, linguistic, uh, syllabic, or alphabetic systems, and then a whole variety of writing systems in Africa, invented by Africans. So that's exactly the kind of research that I've been doing uh, for the last 20 years or so. How many writing systems, you know, approximately, are we talking about? Oh, if we're talking about the ancient writing systems, we have uh, hieroglyphics, uh, we have uh, uh, Ethiopic, we have Meriotic, uh, we have the uh, 
it's a Berber writing system. I, there are Libyan ancient writing systems, uh, Egyptian writing systems, Nubian writing systems, Ethiopian writing systems. When we talk about ancient period, we're saying starting at least from 5,000 years ago all the way to the first uh, classical period, what we call the, uh, the CE period. Uh, those are the ancients. And then what's interesting is that we find an incredible uh, moment of creations uh, in the 19th and 20th century, particularly in West Africa. And then there we have minimum of at least 20, 20 writing systems that were invented in the contemporary modern period. Now I was looking at the Bamum script and it occurred to me that some of the symbols of that script probably came from both, you know, Northeast Africa and West Africa. It is possible that they might have been derived from there. What's fascinating about Bamum script is it's a syllabic system and which utilizes specific signs for every sound that exists in the language. And then therefore they successfully developed a syllabic writing system, which a syllabic writing system is more sophisticated, more efficient than alphabetic system. Because in alphabetic system, you have to add the vowels uh, for you to make sense, to kind of put together a sign for it. But you see, in the syllabic, every character would represent a sound. So therefore, it usually you don't, you pro pronounce what you write, and then you write what you pronounce. So therefore, that's the same thing with the Ethiopic system because the Ethiopic is also a syllabic system. Uh, so therefore, the Bamum, what they did is in the 19th, 20th century, they realized that it is to, uh, uh, it is better or efficient or scientific to create a syllabic system uh, than alphabetic system, and that's what they did. The symbols, perhaps you're right, related to some in some cases to the. Uh, symbols that we find in Northeast Africa and then also to some extent they are also related to the Akan gold weight system that we have in Ghana. In the past we look for manuscripts, uh, we look for inscriptions, we look for a specific kind of uh, canvases so to speak for the writing system but for an instance we know that there is this deep tradition in uh, Senegal where they mark their livestock you know, and then there are systematic signs that are kind of captured on the livestock. In some ways, of course, they are taking inventory. They are also giving identity to the, the to the cattle. But at the same time, that's also just the kind of example that I'm providing you. That's like the kind of system, what I call writing system, right there, which kind of for people to be able to, the people can relate to. So therefore, the Bamum is sophisticated. That's why the French didn't want it to exist, and they tried to destroy it. And then they exiled the king uh, in Joya. I think they burnt the, the palace? Yeah, their palaces, because the palaces in, in those traditions are actually places of, of uh, keeping valuable items. You know, it's a, it's a museum too. You were talking about the Adinkra system, right? Yes, system. yes. Can you comment a bit more? Those are actually called philosophical symbols, philosophical systems, because they are kind of linked with specific proverbs. Uh, specific proverbs. For instance, uh, you're familiar with the Sankofa uh, symbol. And the Sankofa symbol is a bird. Sankofa is a bird. And then that bird has to tilt its neck backward for it to move forward. Uh, so therefore, what does that say? Return to the source. In order for you to be able to grasp the present, nor have vision for the future, you have to grasp the past. So that signifies history. So therefore, the, what is powerful about the Adinkra symbols or the Adinkra systems is that it, it is philosophical, it has full meanings. Each sign would have full meanings and then very sophisticated. So the Akan people uh, put those symbols on their clothing uh, and they uh, have specific symbols for specific events for instance, coronation of the king, or uh, ceremonies of remembrance of their ancestors, uh, marriages, weddings, uh, uh, death. All those ceremonies have specific symbols. The variety of the writing system in Africa is amazing. For instance, there is a particular ethnic group in, uh, in uh, Nigeria where they use color system. So they have, they combine different colors uh, for them to be able to kind of create the 
uh, assigned sounds. Okay, so I believe there are seven or eight categories of colors that they use. And then they combine those colors in various kind of uh, degrees for them to be able to uh, constitute uh, a sentence or a narrative. Okay, so that's actually unique because we don't find any where else. So that's, you know, it's to me remarkable. The same thing we have in the equatorial forest. Uh, we have a writing system that is done on bars. That's the Central Africa. Central Africa, Congo, uh, those regions. We have writing systems uh, on, on bars. And then here again, they use natural ingredients to kind of uh, uh, con co co constitute uh, colors, paintings, and then they do that on bars. And then that's phenomenal. Actually, what we call mud clothes use some of the patterns. Okay, the mud cloth is very much widespread in uh, in uh, uh, West Africa, you know, in, in Mali, Niger, Senegal, you know. The point I'm making is that science and symbols are organically cons uh, constituents of the people of Africa. You know, they not only kind of definitely have oral literature or an oral tradition, but they do also have written tradition. But those written traditions sometimes are so deep uh, they go beyond just simply linguistic communications. They are beyond being the surrogate to language. So therefore that feature was not captured uh, in the past, you know. So therefore I think to me, if we define writing system to mean uh, a sign or a symbol that is capable of capturing a whole set of human activities, uh, then I think we will be able to kind of see those signs, otherwise we will not be able to see them. Actually, when you reach South Africa, what you find in South Africa, they do use beats, you see? And then they also use the beats patterns on their walls. Actually, what's interesting, when you go to South Africa, the ones who do those decorations, the ones who do those artistic works, are women. You know, uh, the distinguished historian, the late Professor C.T. Cato, uh, when he became a, a, a chancellor uh, of, of, of a university in South Africa, he invited me and I went there. And then they gave him a specific blanket, kind of that uh, speaks to the kind of uh, rank that he achieved, the chancellorship, being a leader. So therefore, those colors and the pattern signify that, which kind of says something about his position. Mm -hmm. so when you come to the Ethiopian experience, what do you find? In the Ethiopian experience, actually, they use parchment. And what's parchment? Parchment is a skin, animal skin. And then, in fact, the tanning, the art of tanning becomes an integral part of doing the narrative or writings or generating or producing manuscripts. So the people who are doing the, who the authors of so many, you know, powerful uh, manuscripts, they also have to know the art of tanning. Barks were used as a background, you know, as a canvas. Uh, animal, literally live animals, live cattle. The body is actually is a powerful canvas for Africans, but when they do it, they do it with specific kind of meanings that they associate with either initiation, wedding, uh, defeating an enemy in a war, in a battle. So all those things are captured with science. So signs are with us at all times, actually. And if knowledge is measured by how the society kind of weaves itself, uh, relates to itself and to nature, and then uh, perpetuates itself, then of course we find a whole set of symbols that those folks not only create but be able to capture moments with it, with them. And then those are the kind of things that you find and then that's exactly what we're trying to do, what we've tried to do when we created the website because those distinctive meanings and properties were not realized. The layers of knowledge that are associated with the symbols were not realized in the past. And then Professor Bakari, we have yeah. talked uh, about different aspects of African writing systems. We need to make a few comments about uh, the ancient Egyptian system. I think what is important when we talk about ancient Egyptian writing system is that it's probably the oldest writing system ever invented in the world. Uh, 
heading back, heading back uh, as early as uh, 3500 BCE. Uh, in fact, archaeologists are now hinting the first form of writing in Egypt it didn't start in what we now know as Egypt, but it started in Nubia. And they even gave a date of 36, 3500 BCE. And then it is, in fact, from Nubia that it was uh, transferred to uh, Egypt. And, and the writing system developed much, much earlier before the dynastic period. We're talking about the pre-dynastic period. And then, then of course, uh, so that's one point. The second point is Egyptians have recorded a whole set of activities that they were engaged in, both political, spiritual, uh, cultural, social. Every aspect of their life have been recorded using the writing system. Record that shows an Egyptian African record that shows that some and of the pharaohs of Egypt have traded with what they call the land of Puntland. So uh, therefore, their knowledge has African spread with trade and, and with uh, trade activities. So therefore, from Professor, that perspective also it becomes what, important. Uh, Another important point is, if we, for instance, for 18th dynasty, look in into Hatshepsut in uh, Temple, the pharaoh Hatshepsut the Temple, heritage. there we see records, records really that make a reference to Puntlan, and then also uh, recorded all the goods and items that were exported and imported give us concrete historical evidence. The first thing that we need to do is to identify the sites. And the second thing is to preserve whatever we find in those sites. For instance, uh, Aksum is a classical case. In Aksum, we have several stilas with inscriptions. Those inscriptions have to be preserved in the right way. Uh, because those are really concrete historical records. The same thing with in Cameroon, uh, where we have this Bamum writing system. Uh, the palace has been restored and the writing systems have been uh, placed in a library uh, where the government itself has provided the funding to do that. And then in all the same thing with adding cross symbols. All the symbols that are created, if not uh, archived in a proper fashion, then we lose them. For it is very proper for us, very important for scholars first to identify all the writing systems to conduct some sort of inventory and then come up with the funding to kind of carry out preservation works and then that's really very important because uh, that's the only way that we can say that there is historical context even for this kind of tradition that we have both in the ancient times in the contemporary times. Professor Betiri, I want to thank you so much for giving us a very illuminating discussion interview uh, insights into aspects of Africa's writing system.